Hello everyone. Let's try to be a cheat code ninja today. This question was asked in this week's weekly contest. Let's have a look at it. We are given a prefix array of size n and we have to generate an output array that satisfies the condition given. Now let's try to understand the condition. For a given array, the ith element of the prefix array is calculated by XOR of all the elements from the 0th index till the ith index. Similarly, the i plus 1 index of the prefix array is calculated by XOR of all the elements from the 0th index till the i plus 1 index. And we have to return the array from which the prefix array was generated. Let's look at the example given in the question. Let's assume that there is an element 0 just before the start of the array. We have kept this number as 0 because 0 x or any number will result in that number itself. Let's see how the original array is being generated from the prefix array. Here we have to find a number such that 0 x or that number will result in 5. And we know that 0, x or anything will result in that number itself. Hence our number is 5. You can also see that from the example itself. For the next element, we have to find a number such that 5, x or 0, x or that number is equal to 2. We can see from the example that number 7 satisfies this condition. From now onwards, we could ignore x or 0 because it results in the same number itself. For the next number, we have to find a number such that 7 x or 5 x or that number is equal to 0. And from the example, we could see that 2 satisfies this condition. And now we have to find a number such that 2 x or 7 x or 5 x or that number is equal to 3 and 3 satisfies this condition and for the last number in the array we have to find a number such that 3 x or 2 x or 7 x or 5 x or that number will result in 1 that number will be 2 now let's try to think how we can generate the original array from the prefix array Let's again have a look how the prefix array is being generated from the original array. The ith element in the prefix array would be xor of all the elements in the original array till the ith index. And similarly, the i plus 1 index in the prefix array would be xor of all the elements up until the i plus 1 index. As you can see over here, these two parts are absolutely equal. Hence, this could be rewritten as. Now let's try to rearrange this equation so that we could generate the output array just from the prefix elements. Let's consider a scenario where instead of XOR operation, there was just an addition operation. Let's suppose we have an equation x is equal to y plus z. Let's suppose we have to find out z. This equation could be rearranged as z is equal to x minus y because subtraction is the reverse operation of addition. Similarly, we have to use the reverse operation of XOR operator. The reverse operation of the XOR operator is the XOR operator itself. So now let's rearrange our equation. This could also be written as. So the ith element in the output array would be xor of the prefix element at the same index and one index before. We could also observe that the 0th index in both the arrays would always be the same. Hence, we only need to generate the original array from the first index till the last index. 
we could have an output array and then we could generate the elements from the first index till the last index in that order from left to right. Or alternatively, we could start from the last index and then move to the first index and then generate the output array. In this way, we could modify the input array as well. Because as we are moving from right to left, we never have to visit an element on the right once we have traversed it. Now let's implement our solution. Now let's write a loop from the last index till the first index. This would be a reverse loop and it would skip the 0th index. Now let's modify our array in place. Each element would be the XOR of that element and the element to the left. The 0th element in the array would not change and it will remain the same as the prefix array. We are done with the loop and now we can directly return our answer. The time complexity of this solution would be O of n and the space complexity would be constant. Let's submit our solution. As you can see, our solution is successfully submitted. If you have any doubts or concerns regarding this solution, please mention in the comments. If you liked this video and thought it was helpful, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.